Are you looking for an easy way to balance your footage and shot match? Well, today we're talking about printer lights. So one of the most common things that we have to deal with as colorists and as video editors is making sure that our shots are consistent, that from shot to shot, the color is matching. And to be honest, as a colorist and as a video editor, I spend a lot of time doing this and it is super easy to think that you need lift, gamma, and gain to do this. And you can rely on that, but there's an easier way and there's a faster way and it's called printer lights. Here, let's jump in Resolve and I'll quickly show you. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I have some footage from Blackmagic's website and overall it looks like it's in a good spot. This is all footage that was shot at about the same time of day and when we start looking at the footage, it looks pretty good. Everything's in the same color space. Yes, there's some little variation in the greens and the wave there, but overall feels pretty good. And then we start looking at the fourth shot and that doesn't seem right to me at all. So what gives, what can we do to fix that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on this shot here. And normally we would just create a node. I'm creating a parallel node because I've already done the balance once that I wanna show you how I did it. We'll come to that in a minute. But I created a parallel node. Typically I'd just use a basic serial node. We'll call this BAL2 just to keep things organized. And normally, I just use my lift, gamma, and gain controls to quickly try and get it into a more normalized place. And it has that golden greenish feel to it, so I need to do the opposite of that. Let's add some blues in the shadows. Same with the mids. And you know, it feels better. Automatically, it's getting to a better place. What I did, rather than using my lift game and gain controls, I used printer lights. But you may be wondering why use printer lights? Why is it better to use a printer lights and the offset wheels instead of the lift game and gain controls? Well, I'm glad that you asked because here we are, we got a gradient, basic gradient that I created in Photoshop. And if we look at the waveforms, it goes from Zero, it goes from 100% black to 100% white. And if I just started adding, say, the color red to my lift, it's going to add a red bias to the shadows and the dark parts of the screen. If I do the same with the mids or the gamma here, same thing, adds a red bias, kind of skews the entire image though. But our shadows and our whites are still in their black points and their white points. Same goes with the whites, same problem. You add a red bias to the whites, meanwhile the blacks, it's kind of tapering off. When we use lift, gamma, and gain to try and correct the footage, we're using a smaller tool set to try and make this change. And something that I've been learning a lot about recently as an editor and as a colorist and just creative. A lot of times when we're trying to solve these problems, we want to use the largest and broadest tool that is available to us. And in this case, when we're color balancing, we want to be using the offset wheels because it is the broadest tool. And Colin Kelly has talked about this on his own content. It's something that color timers in the past only had, they had that one wheel to try and get the color into the right place. So if I just, for demonstration purposes, add red here, you can see it's impacting the entire image. And a lot of times when footage is captured, we're not really thinking about it in a lift gamma gain situation. It's just how the footage was shot. It has a certain color bias to it a little bit and it is our responsibilities to fix that. And using the broadest possible tool is how we go about doing that. Let's go back to the example that I was discussing earlier. Here's that same surf shot. Wave's gonna peel off, it's gonna look epic. I mean, again, gorgeous day at the beach. I'm jealous, it's getting cold here in California. I know that may be hard to believe, but 
that was the grade that I did only using the offset wheels. I just, and it's, I think it's in a, a better place because it is reflective of the entire image. I didn't add a certain bias um, or a certain color tone in the shadows, the mids, or the highlights. It's pretty consistent of where the color is being skewed in one direction versus adding colors in different places. And I think this is a really good place to start. So when we look at the corrected image that I used using the offset wheels, it's in a really good spot. I'm really happy about it. But the thing that I love about using the offset wheels is a feature called printer lights. Printer lights basically gives us the ability to go up and down by one point of red, green, or blue using the numeric keys. For instance, four and seven give you the ability to go up and down on red. Five and eight give you the ability to go up and down on green. And then six and nine give you the ability to go up and down on blue. In addition, you can also use like the enter key and the plus key to go up and down in terms of your exposure. There's other things, I, I mean, those are the only ones that I really know. If you look right here, you will see that there's other controls that you can use to add more cyan, more yellow. In doing this, you can see incremental change very quickly. You can also get more surgical by hitting your command key on Mac and going up by a quarter of a point each time. So you can get super specific or you can get a little broader to dial that look in. So how does this work in Resolve? Well, we'll create another node, parallel. We'll live with that for the time being. Could have done a serial, but here we are. So the thing that I notice is we need to add yellow because this image, or excuse me, we need to add blue because this image is super yellow. So if I start adding blue, it's looking better, maybe a little less green. Let's up the exposure a little bit. And I'm gonna have to pull back on that in a second. Um, I mean, you can see that very quickly I've dialed it into a place that's better. More of a normalized state. And from here, any secondary corrections that I wanna make, I very easily and I can very quickly do. And again, when I look at my keyboard here, it was just these keys here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are the only keys I really hit to change the color values. Yes, I used my enter key and I used my plus key to change exposure a little bit overall on that shot, but really it was that easy. Those keys didn't have to take my hand off the keyboard. And as a colorist and as an editor, that is a huge game changer because I don't have to pick up my mouse and then navigate over to the offset wheel here and worry about that. These little things, that we can be doing on a day-to-day -day basis are game changers. It's not the big unlocks. I mean, yes, those are great when you find them, but it's the accumulation of these tiny little things that are really gonna take your color grading and your professional workflow to that next level. There you have it. That's how I pulled this off. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the vlog. If you're enjoying this content, please be sure to hit like and subscribe. But as always, create, share, and sustain the life that you want. Get out there and make some awesome work.